How good does it feel to be back, Robert? It's been a long time since we saw you. How good does it feel to be back? Um, yeah, it feels great. It feels great. I was a little bit back in February, but <laughs> but um, no, it, it feels it feels good to be here at 110. percent It's interesting for me that you know you've talked about the uh, Romero fight and taking time off since then, and of course Israel was in that war with Gaslam in his last fight. Do you, do you feel as though he might be rushing to get back in there, like to have a fight with someone like you after a war like that, or is it a kind of a personal thing? Um, maybe he he had a he had a hard fight. I know personally that after I fought Romero the second time, it was, I needed a bit of time off. Or he needed a bit of time off. It was a hard fight. So uh, yeah, for me, I feel great. I've had a, I've had a, a great amount of time off. I, uh, I've, I've received no head trauma. I'm super healthy, and uh, yeah, I look forward to getting in there. What do you think of Israel as a challenge? Like, I mean, Romero was the boogeyman, right? You've beaten him twice. Like, it's a, it's a different one in the sense that he, he's very hyped. But I mean, is that the same kind of? Do you feel it's as a, a similar challenge in terms of like just as an opponent? I oh, definitely. I think every I think every fight that I have is the biggest threat to my career. Every fighter that I've fought has has had a chance to take it away from me, and I'm going in there hungry, and I'm not going to let them take anything. I feel like you're criminally underrated. You know, when I see how good you are in there, I feel like people have kind of put a lot of shine on Izzy ahead of this fight, and you're kind of like, look, look at what this guy's done at middleweight already. You know, do you feel, ever feel like that? Um, sometimes, but to be honest, like, I don't really care. Like, they'll work it out sooner or later. You know, it, it, it does feel as though because he has so much momentum at the moment, it is a very valuable win for, for you in the sense that, you know, he's generated so much hype and stuff like that. Do you see it like that as well? You're going to take that value from him if you have your hand raised? Um, haven't thought about it really because on a, before I step in there, it's 50-50. I could lose, I could win. You know, as long as, long as I'm doing the right things beforehand, I can move into doing the right things but after. So, so for me, the, the, the result of the fight doesn't really matter. It's about the journey and, and, and doing the right things before it. I recently saw a, a very candid interview with you on, on Grange TV where you, where you opened up about your struggles with depression. Yeah. Is that an, an ongoing process? Do you feel like that's something that you will have to just continually work on throughout of your course. life? Yeah, of course. To, um, you have to be aware. I have to be aware of it. That was one of the best things for me was becoming aware of it and uh, being able to identify it. And it's something I always, I will always have to be aware of and just be on top of. Does it, does it feel good to open up about it? Do you feel like that was therapeutic in any kind of way to come out and kind of acknowledge it publicly? Yeah, it was very therapeutic to be able to just discuss it. And you know what? It wasn't my intention, but a lot of people took, you know, a, a good message from it and then it helped them. So uh, I'm very happy with the result. I was really intrigued uh, listening to you speak about Habib and his wrestling, um, you know, you seem to be really uh, intrigued by it yourself. It seems to have really, like you, you were so excited talking about it. Are you still like a, a fanboy at this, like at some level, you know, when you're watching a performance yeah. like that, does it get you excited? Yeah, definitely. I'm a huge fan of Hibby. Like it's, I think he's phenomenal, honestly. And um, yeah, I think what he does is crazy. I think his skill set is amazing. I think his cardio and endurance is ridiculous. I think he's, yeah, I think he's amazing, huge fan. Do you think that's because like uh, you came in as kind of known as a striker and then obviously everyone's talking about your resume now with wrestling and how good you've come with that. Is, is that why you think you, you like watching Habib so much because he's a masterclass really for, as a wrestler? No, you know what I like about him more than anything is, that, is the fact that one, he's a straight character. You know, I, I, really, I really admire and respect that. But two, everybody knows what he's going to do. Every single person. And no one can stop him. I think that's phenomenal. say to Izzy before the fight or no <laughs> no is there kind of a sense of uh, resentment or friction between you at the moment can you talk about that no less friction than any enemy of mine <laughs> so you talked about your body being 110 percent you're feeling mm. good talk us through your prep and if you're focusing on anything different um so straight after the surgery obviously i had an extensive um like rehab session, um, like block, rehab block that I had to like slowly get back into and, and just build my body back up, build my strength back up, build my health back up. And after doing so, I just jumped back into the sessions. I just trained, putting session away after session. And honestly, it was just, I've made some great leaps and bounds, massive improvements. 
everybody can see at the open workout yesterday I'm faster, I'm stronger, I'm bigger. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, to getting in there Sunday. So without giving too much away, what can we expect from you? Fireworks, absolute fireworks. And Marvel Stadium, we're looking to see the biggest crowd possibly in Australia, let alone UFC history. How excited are you to do that in here, in Australia here? Yeah, I love making history. And uh, to be making history here in my home country, you know, top of the world. Thank you, good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Rob, we're talking about the open workout. Why did you decide, because um, some fighters, they go like 10%, 20%. Yeah. I don't know if you went 100%, but... You put a that was a good workout. Yeah. Why 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 put why put so much effort for that when a lot of the fighters are like man man man. Yeah. Um. I think one I felt like just putting a session in, and and two a lot of people came out to see me. They they hung around the whole time, and they they waited up just to see me. And I thought you know what I'm not going to do a two minute workout. <laughs> All these guys that stood there the whole day there were people fainting because they've been there so long. So uh, yeah no I thought I put a decent workout. Do you anticipate Israel getting a frosty reception? Um, you know, when he walks out. Like, I mean, do you do you anticipate to have like a, a raucous kind of home crowd reception when you go? Out? Oh, one hundred percent. He'll have, he'll have fans. He has heaps of fans. But uh, this is my home turf. That's, that's new terrain for him to a certain degree, right? Because he has been this fan favorite since he came to the UFC. If if there was any kind of hostility, do you think that would kind of mess with his mindset ahead of a fight like this? Who knows? I don't know him well enough. When you watch, I'm sure when you watch the Izzy versus um, Gaslam fight, when you come out of that, were you, did you as a fighter, you go, oh, there's lots of holes, or were you like, oh, that guy is really good? No, I, honestly, I thought I wasn't, I wasn't that impressed, to be honest, because um, I, I thought it would be much more one-sided just due to the, the physical um, differences between him and, and Gaslam. You know, he has a height, reach advantage, and he's a, he's a striker. You know, he's a great striker, he's got great timing. So when he got touched up in the first and second round, I was like, mm. what, what, Were you impressed with anything though? Oh, well, I've been impressed with Israel since he like, got on the scene, like, before that, when he was kickboxing. I think his striking is phenomenal. I think his timing is impeccable. I think the way he uses his like, physical advantages in his striking game is great. But uh, yeah, I do. I think he's a good fighter, a really good fighter. The animosity that seems to be there is mostly on his side, right? Like most of the, the conversation is, is coming from him in terms of storing up some emotions between you two guys. Do you feel like as that's like, you know, fake in any kind of way? Do you feel like it's fabricated? Because even now you're speaking about city kickboxing and him with, with a lot of uh, respect, you know? Yeah, no, it's never been personal for me. Like, I've never tried to make it personal. I've, honestly, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't care about like, him or anything else that surrounds him. I just, I'm doing me. I'm doing my story, this is my journey. And, you know, I have a lot to focus on as it is. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing for a very hard fight with a great fighter, but I'm also doing other things. You know, I'm opening up a new gym in Artaman, which is after this fight, which is gonna be great. Uh, playing with the podcast, Grange TV, shout out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, like I'm doing other stuff. I'm very busy. I'm a busy man. And that just takes time away from things to have to invest energy into that? Yeah, I don't have time nor the emotional capacity to deal with other shit. 